You have a prepaid call from oh. yeah. an inmate at the Kern Valley State Prison, Delano, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for this call. To accept this call, say or dial Hey now, Flacco man. Hey, what's up with you, bro? Yup, just right here, another one like the other one, man. Shit, well, shoot, you had asked me about uh, the little incident with Joe Jeff, you know, and what had, uh, what transpired there. Well, you know, that shit, that was a while ago. That was a while ago, bro. That was uh, 2006. Uh, February 2006. Okay. Let me get a little backtrack. Um, I had come from the county jail. Um, I had just stabbed a cop named Montalvo in the county on a cell extraction. And, uh, you know, the county booted me out. And I was out to court from Tatchby Shoe. So I was out there in Tatchby and, you know, came swooped me up and went to the county for a little while. Got into it with the cops. And, uh, yeah, we catch a little, little, little stabbing on these, these police. And, you know, they shipped me out to uh, Delano after that happened in emergency transfer to go back to Tatchby, you know, where I belong. I was in the shoe uh, right there. Uh, I think I had like a seven year shoe term at that time for, you know, various little attacks on uh, inmates and, and cops. And, you know, I had never been to Delano. I didn't know what their environment was or whatnot. So, you know, I'm being that I'm in the shoe, I expect to go to Atse. So I get there and, uh, you know, R&R &R usually has their, uh, they think it's the obis and the cleats and all that, uh, the little thing, their system on the computer. And, you know, they knew I was in the hole. So they put me in a tank by myself. Like, you'll be returning to the hole because you're going, you're just out to court for Tatchby Shoe. So, you know, waiting, waiting for my ride. Well, uh, you know, later on that evening, they processed us in R&R. &R and I get put on the chain with an actor northern named Lokes from, I don't know where he's from, south side. Or I don't know where he's from, but he's from Solomon. He came with us on the bus. And like I said, well, I never been in Old Delano. My reception was was St. Quentin, and in my first term in 2000 was DBI. So, uh, yeah, I uh, go to this little ad seg, which is D6, and I guess it's it's a very different um, setup right there. It's a there's an A side which has like maybe like. 20 something cells and then there's B side that has another 20 something cells I think it goes up to like cell 252 or 254 and you know there's just two tiers and A side is where you had all the non-affiliate blacks and the dropouts and those that were in the uh, SNY you know category B side had all the actives all the actives and um, all the actives you know 90% of them were on the yard unless they had a some violence so I get there I go to a side and you know I'm as the Northanial writer at the time in 06 everywhere we go we at we, we say we're Northanials we say we're functioning Northanials so you know we can get close to the oppressor and do our thing so I get there and I announce myself hey I'm Northanial just pulled up uh, where the homies at and they're like hey homie your homies on the other side this is a side the homies are on B side. I'm like, okay. Was there any active northerners? And I'm, I'm on the vent right now. I'm on the vent talking to, to an individual named uh, 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 Sneaky from Capitol Park. And I'm like, well, well, check it out, homie. Uh, where's where's the homies? And is there any of them on this vent on this goblet right here? And they're like, nah, there's no there's no homies right here, bro. Uh, you mean we're all dropouts right here? And you know, much respect, but uh, your homies are over there. And I'm like, you're certain there's nobody right here? They're like, nah. I was like, okay, what's up, homie? Yeah. They call me Scrappy from San Juan, Eastside, you know, VNC, Barrio Norte 14. And they were like, okay, okay, that's what's up. I said, look, bro, uh, I'm a Northern Rider. And they were like, whoa, okay, okay, we, never, we haven't had any of you guys around here. Uh, man, uh, so you're still active? And I was like, yes, I am. You know, uh, you know, like, like, like what I say, we're active, but like, what is active mean to most of the people like 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 the public out there when you're active you're your gp you know you're not sny you're not you're allowed to program with other gps 
So, you know, that's what we were. I mean, we're Northanio Riders. We just, you know, refused to go to certain SMYs and to all the SMYs actually at that time. And that's what that's what it was. So when the cops lock us up and when they put us in our cells on a yard, we're gonna go with everybody else. You know, we're our own entity, we're our own company, we're our own gang. And you know, I'm talking to old boy and he's like, man, uh, so what are you gonna do, man? You know, the homies are over there, it's that. Nah. Like, I heard you guys be getting off on them. I'm like, yo, that's that's my goal here, bro. And, you know, I thought nothing of it. I thought nothing of it. Like, okay, they caught me, they knew I was in the hole, so I'm just gonna get shipped off and sent to the hatchet beat. So three days go by and they were like, come out to, uh, to your 114D hearing and it just says you know that I'm in the hole because I'm out to port from Tehachapi Shu therefore I have to be placed in an ad say. So I'm going to this this uh, hearing with the lieutenant and thinking nothing of it and I go to the office and there's a bunch you know there's a whole a bunch of IDs right there and they're like hey so your double cell cleared can you sell up your homies are you still good with the fellas I'm like all the time man they're like, well, so which one of your homies up here can you sell up with? And they show me a bunch of like ID tags, like name tags up there with pictures. And I'm like, any any one of them, any one of them. You know, I'm an active Northanio. And they're like, your file says you're validated. And I was like, yes, yes, it does. And I was validated, but I was validated Northanio writer. I was the first in California to ever be validated in uh, November of 2004. And, you know, they put me a picture down of this dude named Joe Jefferson. And it says AK right there, little Wero de Salas. And it says parole from Pelican Bay Shoe. And I'm like, like, what's up with them? And they were like, you wanna sell with this guy? I was like, it doesn't matter. Like I'm I'm gonna feel it. I'm trying to be I'm trying to move to the other side with my people. And they were like, okay, well, he's on the yard right now, but we'll send the paper down there and you can sell it with them. And I was like, okay, cool. And you know, so I, I started getting all my stuff ready. I had a bunch of tobacco with me. Um, razors and whatnot, you know, a little travel kit, and you know, I secure everything, and I tell the homie down the way, hey, uh, hey here's my bundle real quick, go ahead and hold this for me, because I, I had, you know, established a rapport with the homie sneaking from, from Capitol Park, and you know, I trusted him, like, here, hold this, here's a little issue for you, because you know, most people want to tap into people's bundles, here's some, here's a, take some of this, that's for you, bro, and hold this for me, I'll be back tonight, so I'm going to go over here and whack this dude. And they're like, who are you selling up with? And I'm like, I don't know, this dude named uh, Joe Jefferson, a uh, little wet from Salas. And they're like, oh man, that was, he's a, a, a Cardinal prospect. That's uh, Matt Rocha from Salas, uh, uh, his, his little stepbrother. And I was like, okay, you know, I knew who Matt Rocha was, you know, big homie in the Bay. And I was like, okay, that's what's up. They were like, hey man, be careful. Cause like I said, at that time, I'm like 140 pounds and you know, I'll say Joe Jeff at that time is probably like pushing like 190. And, you know, he's a little taller than me. I mean, I'm short, but he ain't too much taller. He's like 5'7". And they were like, bro, he's kind of big. Just be careful. And I was like, man, it's good, bro. Like, at that time, I'm a kid, so I don't have none of that fear. I don't have none of that. Like, my whole thing is just to announce ourselves in blood everywhere we go. You know, I had already whacked uh, uh, an hermano in, in San Quentin. Uh, I, which I had, I had caught eight years for uh, by the name of Arthur Sowell. Um, I, what do they call him? Oh, they call him Sapo, Sapo from Daily City. And this was in 2005. So, you know, I'm telling the homies, like, man, don't trip, bro. I already know what I got to do. I'm, I'm going to go over there and do this and do that. You know, you have that young mind where, you know, I, I can I can do anything and come out unscathed. And, you know, as, as an older man now, you know, I'm 40 years old now, you know, I don't think like that no more. You know, you, you're a little more cautious, even though I'm a lot stronger, a lot bigger, and I know what to do. It's just, you know, I, I wouldn't have had that blind, um, that blind Superman complex at that time. You know, uh, it was, you know, it was foolish thinking you know, when you're young. You know, you have that invincibility complex where nothing can hurt you, nothing can go wrong, and had it been today i would have got off the first day not on first contact but at that time a big thing of uh, uh like 
a part of us was infiltrating, infiltrating, getting to know these individuals, getting to know their, their habits, getting to know their safe houses and you know their overall business on the street. And that's something that I taught and promoted within the North Daniel Rider structure, you know. So I get moved over there and you know, you got a handcuff. So they handcuffed me and this dude was on the yard when we signed the paper, so we never officially were supposed to put you in cages side by side and, you know, you get to talk to each other. But we didn't do that. So I didn't get to talk. I didn't get to feel him out nothing. So they put me in the cell, and I look in there, and I don't see nobody. But this individual, I, I, I go to put my, my, my bedroll down on the bed, you know, because I'm handcuffed, and I drop her on the bed, and I don't see nobody in the cell. And I'm like, where does this dude at? But as soon as I had walked past the door in the toilet, he slid out the side and the cops closed the door and he was already behind me uncuffing. Well, as a new arrival, Norteños have a policy. The new arrival has to cuff up first, uncuff first. The policy for secur uh, security reasons because they never want to be left vulnerable with the new arrival whom they can't trust because of groups like my own, the North Indian Riders, the New Flowers, the Sucker Freeze at the time, the full 60s, and so on and so forth. So this dude pops out the side and is like, he's uncuffing, he's like, hey, you, hey, hey, you a homie? You a homie while he's uncuffing? And I'm cuffed up, so I'm like, I'm dead to rights. If he actually knows who I am, which they, they kind of did, but they didn't. So I'm like, damn. He's like, yeah, yeah, you a homie or what? And I'm like, hey, bro, yeah, I'm a homie. What's up, man? You know, my name is Chalo de Sanjo. What's up? And he was like, okay, okay. And I'm a, I, I, I get past him, and, you know, I walk past him, and I uncuff and shake his hand. He was like, hey, man, because, uh, you know, there was an individual you arrived with the other day named Lokes, and he said your name is Scrappy and that you were fishing with the dropouts on that side. So, you know, immediately, immediately, you know, like, they know partially, they, partial story, like, 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 they know partial fact, you know, like, I'm like, okay, so my, 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 my brain works in overdrive, and I'm like, hey, bro, my name is not Scrap, my name is Chalo, and yes, I was fishing with the dropouts over there, they played me and told me that they were active, and that they needed to see my lockup order, so I sent them my lockup order. You know, my locker order is clean though, you know, my locker order just says my name and what I'm in the hole for, out to court for the HB shoot. So, he was like, yeah, but they say your name is Scrappy, and at this time, like, my name wasn't known like that back then. And I'm not, I'm not uh, one of these people seeking, you know, fame or, uh, you know, a name for myself. It was, I had done done some things, and I had gone out there and paroled in, in function with the, uh, the, with the Norteños out there in, in Sanjo, and manipulated a lot of people to do Norteño rider activities because, you know, that's who we were. We were trying to infiltrate and, you know, garner our, our, our own our own uh, unit, but we didn't have the numbers to do it. So when we used to infiltrate and, and use the Norteños to do our bidding, you know, it, it was all advancement. It didn't matter. And plus to us, they were expendable because the Norteño rider revolution was under its own banner and not under the NF agenda. So, you know, this dude telling me, Joe Jeff is like, hey man, yeah, that's crazy because this dude, this northerner, he, he came over here and he said all this and that about you that you were, that he didn't know if you were brown in brown on the on the bus was brown in the county jail is a dropout, and also the Sureños at the time wore brown, and I was like, nah, bro, because when you get on the bus you don't wear that brown shirt, you wear the orange shirt, the regular T-shirt instead of the 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 khaki uh, uh, top from uh, from the county jail. You see the red, you know, you got red one, blue one, green one, white one for, for trusty, uh, um, uh, orange one. So, and I guess now the Sonegos have the lime green. So I'm like, nah, man, like, like, you know, I'm, I am me and I had, you know, he's like, hey, look, bro, there's a bunch of questions these people have, you know, this and that. And I, 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 I signed, I signed and, and, and uh, you know, wrote my, uh, my spill to these individuals saying who I was, you know, I concocted where I was in the county. I said I came from, I think I, I think I said I came from like 7A or maybe it was 6B. Maybe it was 6B. It was like an overflow. 
because it was I knew it was a fuzzy fuzzy area where people really wouldn't know who you were or, or where you were at because it was like an overflow area so you couldn't really like righteously check in to to a unit and be a part of that that unit's uh, roll call so you know I'm doing all this and mind you I have writers up on my eyebrow on the side of my head it says fuck NF um, on my arm it says fuck NF on my hands it says fuck NF I got no thing of writer on my collarbone I got the writer bird on my back I got BR Rao behind my ear which is body of writer locals and you know, I got I got all these 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 tattoos, but you know, like when you're in prison, I don't know, like most people don't understand, like unless you got like some like a, a, a big old tattoo that people at, like can recognize you from. People ain't always studying your tattoos. People ain't ain't trying to look at you like that. So it it passed. You know, it went over this dude's head, and he wasn't. You know, he wasn't. He wasn't privy of of, of what my tattoos were or what they meant. So you know, I do my whole NA NAQ and. And you know another thing, like I have to fish because as a new arrival, the the homie that's already cleared, he can't have his back to you. So I, I'm doing all the fishing and all that in the cell, and you know I'm watching this individual, and I get you know we, we start forging a little bond, and he starts being like, man, I man, he's like, man, I need you to get cleared, bro. You you a good homie with the whoop, and I never told the dude I was at a mono or anything. Like I never played that role. I just pretend to be a, a northerner, but. I, and they even asked you, it was weird, because at that time, like, I came in 2000, this is, what, six years later, and, you know, they're asking me if I'm a, I'm a B or a C, if I'm a bro or carnal, they're asking if I can program with the bros and carnal, this is on their NAQ, and I'm like, why are they even asking people like this, but like, what are you supposed to do, like, it's like, nah, I can't program with them, like, like, I don't know, it was just funny to me, and, you know, I, I forged a report of this individual, and, and I started to pick his brain. I started to pick him, you know, what was going on out there in the streets of, of, of Salas at that time. Who's running this? Who's doing this and that? And he's he's one of these guys who's kind of braggadocious. He likes to brag about what he's doing and how he's doing it out there. And, you know, you know, he's getting all this female attention because of uh, his status and who, you know, he's related to and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, okay, that's what's up, bro. You know, uh man and, and all the whole time you know i'm just following all this this information away to hand over to the homies or well, the, the writers the compadres at the time in uh in in the revolution like i said before these people are smart they were like who or where were you and who were you with in san quentin when you were there from 2003 to 2005 so i knew all these names because I was in the oil with them when I had whacked the other hermano, when I had knocked out a cop, and uh, uh, had, had speared somebody there. You know, he's like, who who you here with? Who, who was the maestro at the time on the back bar of Carson section? And I knew at the time, you know, it was some, some dude that we used to go at it with, uh, uh, Dang St. Nicholas, you know, uh, Siete from Vacaville. And you know, who were the carnales there at the time? You know, there was a, a, a Sykes from Salas, there was a... Um, uh, What's his name? Nicoya from Frisco, Wicho from Sanjo. And funny thing is, Wicho happened to be right there. Right there. Okay, before I sailed up with Wero, Wicho was supposed to move in with Wero. And Wero was like, man, I was supposed to sell up with this dude. This dude was, you know, talking masa on the tier, this and that. He's a he's a carnal that went bad, and this and that. And, you know, I was in a dirt, this dude in the cell. And he had an ice pit. You know, and he still had it. And he was like, yeah, you know, I was supposed to get this dude, I said, I gotta turn this back into the homies with you, you know, because, you know, everything clear, everything's clearing with you. And I did get clear, I did get partially clear. You don't get fully cleared until you touch that yard, you know, until you, until you get out there in the yard. But I got partially cleared. At the time, there was a, a, a senora, a viejo from San Juan, there was a, another older homie, motorcycle Rick from Vaisa, Pistol Pete from TC, uh, another uh, homie, Rhino from Palma from San Juan. And, and a few other cats, you know, the oh, Willow from Sound Hole, from, from originally from Lockridge, you know, and and I'm there with these dudes and they, they partially clear me. I don't know how they didn't know who I was or, you know, my, my case out there when we killed the, the, the young Southsider 
who, who, you know, him and his, his boys or his hood, they, you know, they, they try to rape and kill the homegirls who went and, you know, smack some young Southsiders. And like on that tip too, like, you know, the young Southsiders go to the old Southsiders, you know, and it, it was what it was. If we happy, they were, they were young, nah. It's not like we went and talked to these individuals and find out who they were and, you know, carted them and say, hey, you know, how old you, what's your ID? Nah, we sent some Southsiders to smack them. They, they raped and killed the young homegirl and it was what it was. So I don't know how these individuals didn't know that because it was a public interest case in San Jose. And maybe they did know. Maybe they did want me to hit the yard. I, I, I don't know. And I've, I've met and talked to people after the fact, after that. You know, a lot of people, they had, had, had dropped out. The homie Titi from, from, uh, from Farmas. And, you know, they were all there. They were there at the time. So, uh, so you know, I, I go to triage. They treat my little bite mark. And he goes to triage. And... You know, they uh, give him some steri strips or whatever because he refused to get stitches. And they give him, you know, whatever to close up his face and they hose us off. And in you know, five cans, we would burn it for a long time. And I, I had a uh, long hair on the top. I shaved her all around the side. So, like, damn, that, that thing stuck in my hair for a while. But, you know, I ended up talking to him like a week later at medical and he was like, you know what, bro? You did exactly what I would do. And I can't, I can't take that from you. And I was like, yes, what's up, bro? You know what? Uh, it is what it is, and you know I had no hard feelings towards him. You know I didn't I didn't hate the individual. He was actually a, a cool cat, and you know to this day, like I don't wish ill will on the individual. I don't know if he's still pushing or not, but it was what it was. But when you go in the cell with people like that, or you're in, in an environment where you're outnumbered and you know you're not supposed to be there, you know you gotta have a strong psychological mind because it will take its toll on you. It'll eat you up. But you gotta focus on your goal. Focus on your goal and execute your execute your plan. Don't ever hesitate. Don't make excuses for why you're not doing it, why your timeline has been adjusted or changed. No, do it when you're supposed to do it or just do it immediately. Because yeah, you will make excuses for yourself and that's the wrong thing to do. I was a little bewildered that I was skating through being unscathed, you know, because uh, this dude had an ice pick, and, you know, uh, appearance-wise, you know, he was a lot bigger than me and could probably knock me down with that ice pick if, he, if I was caught unaware. And, you know, being my invisibility complex at the time or not, I mean, I was still, you know, I still realized my, 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 uh, my risk. And it's like, we would sleep, like, I would go to sleep, but like anytime I would move, this dude would like pop, like wake up, his eyes would pop open, or I could hear him stop breathing. Like he uh, he was on his toes, he was on his toes. But slowly but surely I started knocking down those walls, like those walls of defense. And funny thing was he was he was writing to another uh, hermano, the one I had spoken previously, who was a maestro in, uh, in San Quentin. And that, that, that individual, uh, Danny St. Nicholas. And he was like, hey, bro, you want to write him? And I was like, man, this would be comedy because, you know, me and that dude go at it. Because, you know, he was, he was a, a, an active Norteño, uh, you know, and so. And I was a writer at the time. And he used to like to run his mouth. And we used to run our mouth right back to that dude. And I was like, man, wouldn't it be a, 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 a treat to write this individual and say that I'm in the cell with, with uh, with Joe Jeff, and then I already knew I was in a whack Joe Jeff, so I'm like, man, this would be amazing right here. You know, what a, what a, uh, you know, a, a, a stab to the, you know, to the, to this ego and all, all their guile for, for, you know, whatever, whatever they think they are. And, you know, I didn't end up writing the letter, but I already had it, I already had it set, man. I'm gonna go out here and go to the yard and do what I do, but it really wasn't realistic because they eventually catch that. When you go to committee, they're like, you know, where were you at? Where were you housed at? And I knew they would have slammed me down and took me out of that cell. So what I did was the day before I did it, there was our neighbor was his Grego, a BGF from uh, from LA. And he was leaving to Tehachapi. And the cop had said, hey, you're not on the list because he knew I was leaving Tehachapi too because I was just out to work. So yeah, I'm just, the, the, the property officer was like, look, you're not on the list to go to the Hatchby tomorrow. However, 
this says there was a room or something for two add-ons but he was going to get the information later so he said be prepared to go and this was Super Bowl Sunday and I'm trying to come out to you know I, I wanted to do it in the shower because the way it was situated all the dropouts on A side would see it and on B side all the actors would see it everyone Every, every one of them, you know, the, the, the South Siders, the Whites, the North Angles, everybody. And, you know, I wanted to set an example, you know, in front of all, all, all individuals. So, I'm like, damn, okay, I'm going to get this due today. We had showers today. And they didn't run them. They didn't run them, I guess, because of, you know, the Super Bowl. So, uh, the next day came. The next day came, and, you know, I had already lowered this dude's entire defense. Like, he was already... He was in there bird bathing because you, you can bird bath if your if your cell is a, a new arrival and not clear, but you got to do it with the shoes on. So it's like then you gonna have wet wet feet all day. But usually they they had two pairs of shoes. So the next day we go to showers and this individual had had lowered his defenses and and all that so so far that he took a shower. He goes, hey, he goes, I I, I showered. You know, he posted up. And he goes, hey come to this side because on the far side of the the far side of the showers uh because there's two showers on top and two two on bottom and they lock you in there because you're in the hole he there's like a little spot where he can take a shower and be unseen by the rest of the homies and he did that but i, I mean i was no coward i wasn't gonna whack him uh while he was in the shower or anything because i had already got into a conejo from gilas over that larry lucero was like man you whack the homie you came from behind in in r and r and and did that to to big sapo from daily city and i was like okay shoot so you know this time i'm gonna walk up to this individual and let it be known because like you want to you want to you want to tell me that i'm coming i'm coming from behind people but that's that's a northern mo you're trying to hit people when they're asleep you're trying to hit people when they ain't looking you know cut them in their in, their, in the side of their neck and their face and then have two other people bomb on them and then and then bail out Okay, well, I'm going to show you how, how a warrior does it. So, Joe Jeff finished showering, put his clothes on. The cops came to collect our razors. And when they came to collect our razors, I gave it to him. Well, mind you, my write-up tries to say that, that Joe Jeff backed up to the slot first. That's not true. He can't back up to the slot first because I'm not cleared yet. I have to do it first. So, you know, the cops, they, they write things the way they want. But, you know, he was, the cop was putting my razor away, and I told Joe Jeff, hey, who's that down there? So he looked down there and he didn't see nobody. And by the time he turned, like by the time he turned back to look at me, I was already in his face. And I told him, hey bro, don't take this personally. You know, and I slashed him across his face. And you know, it went deep enough to where, you know, I, I it was a it was a straight razor by itself. So, you know, it was it was it was a deep cut. But it was just a, a razor by itself, and I you know, I didn't keep going, nothing. I just slashed him once. I felt the teeth like like do a little t -t -t -t, like against the teeth, and then he grabbed my arm and he was like, "Hey, bro, what are you doing, man? He's like, why are you why are you doing this? What are you doing?" And you know we started rustling, so I flicked the razor and like towards him. And he ain't gonna find it because it's so small. And the showers, I don't know why, because when we were rustling, it turned on. And like I figured this dude was gonna have hands or something. He wasn't even throwing no punches. He was just trying to rustle. And finally, we fell to the ground. And the way we fell is I landed on top of him. And he had been trying to bite me, like, when we were rustling. Like, but I wasn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't let him. I was pushing his face back and, and, and punching him. And when we fell, like, my, my, my fingers, two of my fingers were landed in his mouth somehow. And, like, I was trying to push myself up. And this fool started biting my fingers. Like, I ain't gonna lie, that, 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 I mean, that stuff hurts. That's just, like... Like, damn, I felt like he bit my finger off, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was just little, little, little teeth marks. But, so, when he was doing that, he was biting my fingers, I dug my fingers into his eyes. And he started screaming, all right, all right, all right, all right, stop, stop. And I know, he tried to throw a couple of little marshmallow punches, and I'm like, what the hell? And I just started drilling them, boom, 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 and they hit us. They kept hitting us with, with, uh, they hit us with five cans. And, you know, after they hit us with them five cans, uh, you know, we're all orange and, like, Cheetos on the ground. And he's like, why, bro, why? And I'm like, hey, bro. And like I said, we're trying to infiltrate and, and plant the seed and sow dissension with these individuals. So I'm like, hey, bro, I got nothing but love for you, but the, the homie Willow told me to do it. 
And he was like, why? I ain't do nothing wrong. He goes, when? I said, man, the day he went to A-Side to use the restroom, that's when he sent me, you know, I talked to him through the vent. And he was like, what did I do? What did I do? I was like, bro, I'm not going to talk about this in front of the cops. And he was like, but I ain't do nothing wrong. And, you know, he was just like in a whole, like, emotional role right there. And I was like, look, bro, like, I got love for you, bro, but I was just doing what I had to do, you know, what I was told. And it was all a lie, you know. That was just me trying to be deceitful. And I wanted him to go back and, you know, take off on his people or start questioning things.